<laughs> Welcome to tonight's student-led candidate forum for the school district of the Holman Board of Education. May we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Crystal Lee, and I am currently the student representative on the Board of Education. Joining me today as part of our student facilitation and moderation panel are Holman High School student council members, Quinn Moldenhauer, Kevin Zilke, and Julia McBride. I would also like to thank the candidates for their participation this evening. I would also like to thank those in attendance and those watching online for engaging in this important process of electing two candidates to serve three terms, three-year terms on the Board of Education. Our format this evening will include a round of three-minute introductions by the candidate followed by a series of questions. Each question will be read by one student, one of our student moderators, and each candidate will have one minute to respond. The student timekeeper, er, Quinn will provide a 15 second warning and notice when the time has expired. Candidates may yield their time but must stop when the time expires. One hour has been allo allotted for the questions and answer portion of the forum. Once this is complete or if all the questions have been asked prior to the end of the hour, candidates will have an additional one minute to provide closing remarks and follow up to any questions previously asked. We will then conclude the event. We will now begin with the opening remarks portion of the forum. Prior to the start of this forum, the candidates drew numbers to determine the order we will follow this evening. We will rotate where the question starts in order of <laughs> Jennifer Deek, Chris Lau, and Mike Durning. You may now begin your opening comments. Okay. Well, my name is Jennifer Deek, pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm the current school board president. I'd like to thank our student council for moderating the forum, as well as the district staff involved in the preparations for the forum. A little bit about myself. I grew up in Northeast Wisconsin on a dairy farm. There I developed a strong work ethic that has stuck with me my whole life. In high school, I not only worked on the farm, but found a way to successfully balance school, sports, piano, band, and a variety of other co-curriculars. In 1992, I came to La Crosse to attend college and graduated with my bachelor's in biology in 1996 and my master's in biology with an emphasis in geographic information systems in 1998. My master's thesis research was completed in conjunction with the United States Geological Survey, also known as the USGS. I have remained working with the USGS ever since in a variety of roles. I quickly worked my way up the chain at the USGS and became the chief of the Geospatial Sciences and Technologies branch, one of four science branches at the center in 2008 at the age of 34. I have been a part of the center's leadership team ever since where I manage budgets, develop project plans, exercise a broad range of supervisory responsibilities, develop short and long-term strategies to meet partner needs, maintain close working relationships with partners, administrators, and professional personnel, stay abreast of new developments, adhere to countless mandates by the Bureau, Department, or Congress, as well as lead the diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility team for the entire center. Also, I have been on the Holman School Board since April of 2021, and the president of the Holman School Board since June 2022. As a board member, I am dedicated and prepared to put in whatever time and effort is needed to keep the school district of Holman on a successful path. I am an advocate for educators and students. I am also dedicated to ensuring our school district remains a high achieving district, and I will listen and work constructively with all stakeholders through proper channels. On a more personal note, I have two children in the district, each following very distinct paths through their educational experience. One of my children is in TAG, and the other comes where, and, and school comes very easy for them. My other child has a diagnosed disability and receives services through an IEP. Living with both these realities day in and day out provides me with a very unique, broad perspective on what it means to meet students where they are at, 
what is entailed to help them meet their full potential, and what is needed to ensure we have the right staff in the right place to meet our students' needs for academic achievement. I also want others to know that I'm always looking for ways to continually improve our district's educational outcomes, and I'm deeply committed to staying informed on educational issues at the state and national levels and enhancing my effectiveness as a board member. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer Deek. Well, next on opening comments is Chris Lau. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chris Lau, and I want to first thank the Holman High School Student Council for hosting this forum tonight and Miss Lee for her service for the board this year. Thank you very much. Uh, I am the board vice president and longest serving member of our current board. I've served in a variety of board committees in my time on the board, including personnel and governance, facilities, and policy. I'm running again because I really believe in our district and in our community. I approach my role on the board with a multifaceted lens as a parent, an engaged community member, a working professional, and a public school advocate. As a parent, I bring a commitment to making the school district at Holman the very best it can be. My family and I have lived in Holman for nearly 16 years. I have two daughters that are currently in fifth and seventh grade and have been students in district since 4K. I have a vested interest in making Holman schools great, not only for my children, but for all the students who do or will receive their education in our district. I believe that a high quality public education offers great opportunities for growth and development for children. As an engaged community member, I try to give back to the community where my talents suit best. I've been a long time volunteer with the North American Squirrel Association, a local nonprofit that helps the elderly and disabled enjoy the outdoors. My most recent work with NASA has been to lead the building of an all abilities park right here in Holman. I've been a volunteer in the district for since my oldest daughter first entered Viking Elementary, and I've tried to do what I can to help out, including serving as a volunteer advisor for the HMS Ski and Snowboard Club this winter. My professional life has been in quality management with a focus on continuous improvement, data analytics, and problem solving. My temperament and pragmatic approach allows me to be open-minded when addressing issues. In my current role, I work to solve problems for frontline staff using innovative solutions. I feel this overlaps perfectly with what we are trying to accomplish in the district and on the board. My educational background is in business and public administration, and I hold an MBA in healthcare leadership. Public ed education is something I care deeply about and believe that it is the foundation of our communities. I am proud of the diversity, equity, and inclusion work that the district is doing. This is a great continuation of the work that has been done and sets a path for the vital work that is still ahead. All children should be welcome and safe in Holman schools, just as they are. It is our responsibility to actively build a culture of belonging so that everyone feels safe, valued, and respected. As a board member, I need to be out in front, leading the efforts to ensure that we provide positive environments that promotes physical safety and the social emotional well-being of both students and staff. Thank you. Very well said, Chris Lau. Thank you. And next we have Mike Dernan. Thank you, Crystal, and thank you, Quinn and Julia and Keevan, for being here and representing the students of the Holman School District. And thank you for everybody here in uh, who is participating either in person or online. Mm -hmm. The question I know many people have in Holman is, who is Mike Dernan? And why is he running for school board? And probably more importantly, why is he running at this time? Well, to start, you know, the answer to that question, let me start with my why. Because I think that's the most important reason for anybody to be doing anything. My why is very simple. It is to live life creating a transformation of self and others to be better every day. How I have done that through the years has been multifaceted with a multitude of of experiences. These experiences have included 35 years in higher education. I have served as an instructor, that instructor specifically of teaching people to be PE teachers. And I'm proud to say uh, some of those former students are in our district. Uh, Cal Burnt over at Prairie View Elementary and Jason Luloff here at the high school. I've served as a football coach through many of those years, not only teaching the game, but teaching life lessons. As a college administrator, I have had a multitude of roles that way, including in my last full-time position as the Dean of Students at the University of Dubuque, where I oversaw residence life, behavior intervention, student conduct, including Title IX issues, and was a member of the President's Council. So we had to deal with everything regarding budgets on a yearly basis. My experiences also include community engagement, 
has represented as my roles as a commissioner in the city of Dubuque as a member of the Equity and Human Rights Commission, the Dubuque Community Police Relations Commission, along with being a member of the Dubuque School Resource Officer Task Force. Currently, I also serve as president of the Chris Norton Foundation, and so you can go look that one up if you would like, all online. Furthermore, I continue to provide leadership, seminars, and presentations for young and aspiring leaders. Most recently, I was uh, held one for a number of uh, Holman High School students here uh, a couple months ago. These experiences, my education, which is geared towards education with a bachelor's of science in physical education, a master of arts in physical education, athletic administration, and I now will uh, graduate this spring with a doctor of ministry. I believe they are why I am here in conjunction to that goal of helping others, providing vision and guidance for a district in a district that does include my grandchildren. Thank you very much and look forward to answering your questions. Candidates, thank you for your opening comments. We'll now move into the question and answer portion of the next event. Chris will answer the first question. Each of you will have one minute to answer the question. As Crystal mentioned, Quinn will inform you when you have 15 seconds left of your time, so you may conclude. Quinn will also let you know when your time has expired. Please stop at that time. If you do not have enough time to answer or think of something you'd like to add or clarify after your time, you can address these during your one minute closing remarks. The first question is, what will your goals be as board member? So my goals, um, a lot of things we want to accomplish. Uh, we've just begun our work on the referendum and I want to see those updates to our buildings and grounds completed. Um, I, we are currently working on a new compensation model for educators, and that's been a, a, a long process. I want to make sure that we continue to attract and retain staff with that model. Um, I want to continue to work around our DEI through our policy and governance so that our students feel that they belong and are safe and can learn on their authentic selves. Um, I want to continue to work on our transparency and authenticity with all of our stakeholders. We've come a long way in engaging with the various groups within our district, so we want to continue that work. And then I just want to be a, a continue to be a champion of our school district and all the great things that our students and staff are doing. So, Mike Dernan, you would go next, please. Sure, thank you. I want to bring what I would consider and call it as a caringly intrusive attitude and mindset to looking at the aspects of student learning fiscal matters, the workforce, the community engagement, and the health and safety. Specifically, one of the key areas I see in reviewing the dashboard that looks at and evaluates everything going on in the district is in regards to the work-life balance. Simon Sinek, who is a great leadership development person, states that that basically is attributed to harmony and feeling value. So if that is a red mark right now for this district, I believe that is something that needs to be addressed and addressed in a hurry because the people there are on the front lines and they are the ones taking care of the students. And so we need to look at that seriously. Thank you. You can continue, Jennifer. Yep. <clears throat> um, my priority goal would be to maintain the high levels of student achievement in our district. And that can't be done without recruiting or retaining our high quality educators as well as prioritizing our staff when it comes to compensation. Um, it also can't be done without the board and the district working closely together to ensure our goals and priorities remain aligned well into the future. Um, a second goal would be to foster a school environment of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I feel we need to cultivate a school environment where all students can thrive. We need to continue to work to provide each and every student, no matter who they are or what their abilities are, with a high quality education. And we need to continue to have the right staff in the right place to meet the needs of each child and ensure that they feel a sense of belonging. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Mike Dernan will answer the next question first. Question two. What do you see as the current strengths of our school district that the board should work to maintain going forward? People. Pure and simple, the people. We have great students, which is very 
you know, apparent to anybody who's looking at social media in terms of all the accomplishments <clears throat> that they have gotten and they can't get there without the people who are working on the front lines. We have some passionate people who care about students and that's why we need to make sure we do everything we can to continue assisting them with you know, financial resources and making them feel valued so they can continue to provide great learning experiences for our students. I think even though there are some budget concerns, I think if you take a look at the budget here in the Homeless School District, there are some good things to work with as well. So I think that is a strength at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Dernan. All right, um, I, I think our biggest strength in our district right now is uh, student achievement. We had the top <clears throat> report card score of all districts in a five county region area. Um, also within the last two years, we've had three schools win awards. Um, one of them was the National Blue Ribbon School Award, and then we also had two schools win the Model PLC at Work Schools Awards. So um, that's just a really big deal. Another strength I see in this district is um, safety. I think that our district prioritizes safety of all of our staff and students here. We have very strong safety plans. We practice drills at least monthly. And when we need to debrief and look at things um, and make adjustments and changes, we do that. Uh, we've won the WASBO S Safety, Security, and Wellness Award recently, and we've also implemented the new Stop It program, which has um, two-way communication and 24-7 access to, to someone to talk to when needed. Thank you. I think there's a uh, bunch of things that are positives to the district. I, Jennifer kind of stole my thunder there with the, our DPI report card for the area being one of the highest ranked school district in our region. Um, we have had multiple schools that have won state and national awards. Jennifer said the Viking and HMS with the PLC award and then Prairie View with the Blue Ribbon School last year. Um, I think our educational offerings are exceptional, be it our core curriculum, our AP courses, our trades and apprenticeship programs, our early college credits offerings, and our co-curricular offerings for not only sports and the arts, but for our um, children with disabilities. Our Adaptive Sports League is something that I really pride myself on being a, a, a Viking and having that available to our students. Um, our, our food service is, is known throughout the region and the state as something that is very exceptional for our district. So the, uh, just many things out there that are really great about our district. Thank you, candidates. Jennifer, you will answer this next one first. The question is, what specific challenges and opportunities do you see in our school district, and how would you start to address them? Yeah, so I think our biggest challenge right now is that we continue to run a budget deficit over the last few years. Um, the board and the district are continually working together on uh, finding cost savings and ways to help in that area um, while still maintaining the highest level of student learning and services. And the board has also provided the district with guidance to go ahead and begin exploring a operational referendum in the event that that's needed in the future. Um, another challenge I think for the district is um, ensuring that students experience a sense of belonging. I've seen um, research data, survey data in the past about particular groups of students and individuals in our buildings and they are concerning to me. And I would like to see um, more students feel comfortable reporting incidents of bullying. And also our uh, DEI committee is working on a DEI long range action plan right now. And I'm hoping that that can help us make improvements in this area in the future. I will piggyback a little bit on what Jennifer said. I, I believe funding is the biggest issue that we are. We do currently have a budget deficit and um, with uncertainty at the state level for funding, um, our, our budget is a, is a big issue for us. Um, we do need to work with the, the administration and the staff to come up with some, some different solutions on how we wanna go about spending money. Um, but th with that being said, we still do need to attract and retain teachers and that um, is one of the largest expenses we have in our district as it should be. It's we, uh, we want 
the best for our kids and we want to compensate our teachers as well as we can. So we do need to work on making sure we do have the funding needed to uh, support our teachers. And then the last thing I would say is if I were given a top three would be just the student and staff social and emotional well-being, mental health, and just being able to have the support that they need to make sure that they are able to learn and teach if they're having a hard time with their mental health. They can't do either of those things. Well, I'm going to actually go along with all of, you know, both my counterparts here. I think the fiscal responsibility is important. You know, we need to be able to enhance learning experiences of students and attract and retain, you know, our qualified educators. And, and finances are going to have a big part of that. I think uh, the issue of the staff is something that we're going to need to address. You know, it's, it's a red flag on the dashboard. And I think we, the board and the districts needs to continue to be an astute to the parameters and ramifications of various legislation, such as Act 20, in terms of how that is going to be handled uh, in the upcoming years to come. And then, you know, issues regarding Title IX. And it, there's changes that are in store for that, having been on the front lines of that one. Bullying, school safety, equity for students. These are all important issues that need to be addressed continually by the board. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Ooh. Chris will answer the next question first. Please explain how you see the role of the school board, board versus the role of the district administration. Well, the school board is we are here for to policy and high level decision making. Uh, the board establishes the rules and the policies for the governance of the district, and we work collaboratively with the administrator and the administrative staff on how they want to run the day-to-day -day operations of the district. Um, we set the vision and the goals of the district, measure the success of the district against those goals. You can see we have our, our dashboard right behind everybody back there. Um, it's our job to adopt a fiscally respond responsible budget for the district and pay attention to the expenditures and regularly monitor the fiscal health of the district. Um, uh, but I'm also uh, supposed to, uh, I'm it's supposed to be an advocate for the district as well, but we can't just be uh, constantly being positive. We have to be somewhat critical when we are making decisions. So. Thank you. Mike? Sure. I think, uh, number one, the board is to provide strategic planning in conjunction with the individuals uh, in the district office who I would trust are working with the administrators and the staff throughout the school district. Uh, there's a degree of fiscal responsibility, double-checking what has been presented by district office in regards to the finances. I also think it's really important that this board is a voice for all members, all stakeholders within the Holman School District. We need to make sure we are reaching out to all aspects, all stake stakeholders, and finding out what their voice is saying and bring that voice forward uh, within our board meetings and, and working with the district office. So thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? Yeah, so the district administration's job is to run the district. They basically um, translate the policy that's set by the board and turn it into action. And they run the day-to-day -day operations of the district, where the school board's job is to make sure the districts run well. Uh, we set the policies, we establish the goals, we hire the district administrator, and we have budget oversight. However, it's very important that the district and the uh, board uh, work closely together on and keeping their goals and priorities aligned in order to continue having a high-functioning district like we do here in the school district of Holman. Thanks. Thank you, candidates. Mike, you will answer the next question first. What are your thoughts on public funding being used for students choosing to attend private religious schooling? Julia, thank you for that crucial question. First of all, the board, unfortunately, the legislators set the rules for that. And people have choices. Okay? And I don't believe if I have a choice, I don't want to pay for somebody else's choice. That's me personally. And I believe that should be the school boards. We should not be paying for other people's choices. The best thing we can do to counteract that whole arena is make this place 
the optimal learning situation so that no one thinks about going somewhere else besides Holman. This people of Holman should be looking at the Holman school. They're saying, we have the best. I have no reason to send my son or daughter, whoever, to another school. And I think if we focus our time and attention and our efforts in that, that becomes a null point. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? Um, yeah, I guess first of all, um, I believe in the separation of church and state. And while school choice in general can have some benefits, I do not support taking public funding meant for our public schools and providing it to religious institutions. To me, it raises a lot of concerns about equity and fairness. Um, so for example, public schools are open to all and private schools favor some students and turn others away. Also, public schools are subject to a range of accountability measures, such as standardized testing and curriculum standards, where private schools have less accountability in terms of how they're using that funding. Um, so basically, for me, by sending public school funding to private schools, it's draining our resources and students away from the public schools and weakening the public education infrastructure overall. So, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I agree with both the other members up here up on, on the on the table that publics the vouchers should not be used they should not the coffers should not come from the public coffers the public education is the backbone of our country and that charter and private schools can be, be great for some but are not a replacement for a well-funded public education system um, there can be negative impacts to those who are struggling as English as a second language or those who can't afford what the voucher does not cover when it comes to the private school system or those with disabilities. The, the choice goes both ways and from, from the parents and from the schools. The schools do not have to choose to, to accept students with disabilities. The public schools do and that's something that we should do. It's, it's within our core, it's a, what we need to be doing. Um, there, it's, there's just no indication that the education that you get in a private school is any way, shape, or form better than what you get in a public school. So to Mike's point, we do need to provide that we are doing exactly what we need to be doing at the school and making it the, the best place that it can be. Thank you. <clears throat> Jennifer, you will answer the next question first. The question is, what, is, what are the most important budget issues facing your school district? And what are your ideas for addressing them? Okay, well, the most important budget issue in our school district right now is that we continue to operate with a budget deficit. And this is there for a variety of reasons. Um, there's record inflation. There's uh, revenue per pupil not keeping up with the inflation. There are ESSER funds that are expiring later this summer. We have increase in um, special education needs from our students. Uh, we have a decline in our enrollment, and we have many unfunded mandates that we have to keep up with, such as Act 20. And the way that we could go about addressing that, or we are going about addressing that, is that the board and the district are working together to uh, find those budget reductions right now. But we are keeping in mind that we have, that the board has set a fund balance goal of at least 26.3% of total expenditures. And we do realize that if nothing changes, it is likely that we will go below that goal into the future and we may be going to an operational referendum. So, thanks. I would piggyback on a lot of what Jennifer said. Our, our state funding is not where it needs to be. We are currently operating in a deficit and are projected to be going into that, into the next, well, the foreseeable future. Um, what we can do, I think, to alleviate some of that that pressure is to sticking to our plan and our strategic direction. Um, like Jennifer said, we do have a goal as a, as a board to, to keep our fund bonds at a, at a healthy ratio. Um, we want to have everybody at the table when we're making this decision. So a community-based approach to how we want to solve problems. So staff, having teachers and staff, community members, parents, students at the table when we're making these big decisions is key for us. Um, I feel that we cannot compromise on our core academics. Those are the, are the reason why people send their kids to our schools is for those academics. So we need to look at alternate solutions. And I think that's one of the characteristics I bring. That's what I do in my everyday job is look at those complex problems and try to solve them. So I'm happy to keep on doing that. I don't disagree with any of that. It, the fiscal 
aspect and, and working at the potential deficits for a long time is not good. And I've been there. I've been in those cabinet meetings. I have sat in there in those rooms and we're looking at all the numbers. And I still, to this day, will never forget the president I was working for down there. He basically went to the cabinet and said, here's what I want you to do. We have to make some changes. I want you to go to your staffs, go to the people and get their ideas and bring all their ideas back to the main table so that everyone was going to get involved with making those changes that need to happen. And I think that needs to be paramount for this district is to include, and Chris kind of mentioned already, including all voices, all stakeholders to make sure we are solving this, to, this issue together. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Uh, Chris will answer the next question first. Uh, the district recently released a statement regarding DEI. How do you feel about the statement, and would this work be a priority for you if elected? I mentioned this in my opening. Yes, I, I fully support the equity statement. As a public school, we have a responsibility to affirm the whole student and prepare them for the life once they leave the district. Um, we re I recognize or we recognize as a district that there are barriers that exist within the educational system, and those unfortunately do here exist here in Holman. Um, and that does require us to be open in addressing these issues um, and the barriers and make it be committed to making a change. Um, we do need to be more cognizant of our marginalized students, um, such as those of color, LGBTQ plus community, those with disabilities, and those who are, socio who, who are socioeconomically disadvantaged. Thanks. Thank you. Mike? Sure. Well, having spent time on Equity and Human Rights Commission, this is an important issue for me. Uh, and I want to just rephrase it a little bit. I think it was a great step for the district to, to have the statement. Let me talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because I think the B needs to be there. Diversity is simply numbers. Where are we? Equity is meeting people where we're at. Inclusion means we're bringing everybody to the table. Belonging means we're listening to all the voices at the table. And we need to listen to all the voices. And that means everybody. And if we are doing this work properly, we can solve a lot of problems. And we will not, Chris has already mentioned the bullying and things like that. We're doing this in the right way. We can solve those issues as well. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? Oh, yeah, so as the board president, I stood up the current DEI committee, and I'm very proud of the statement the board committee developed for our district. And I have seen the survey results that prompted our DEI work, and I'll say that many of those results were disheartening and were very impactful to me. And a lot of things that were happening do not align with my values, and nor do I think they align with the district's vision of belong, serve, succeed. So I think there's a lot more we can do to help create an environment in our schools where everyone feels safe, valued, and respected. So um, yes, if I were reelected, I would definitely stand by our district's commitment statement, as well as the DEI long range action plan that our DEI committee is currently working on. Um, and I truly believe that continuing with this work will help make us better in our schools, will help make us better in our community, and will make us just simply better people. Thanks. Thank you, candidates. Mike, you will answer the next one first. Yep. What background do you have that will assist you with school financial issues, the budget process, and the board's role in financial oversight? Thank you for that great question, Julia. I think first and foremost, my time being at in higher ed at the cabinet level where we we're dealing with budgets on a daily basis and having gone through a lot of ups and downs throughout those years, I've been in, and I feel for the district office right now because I've been in their shoes uh, and had to deal with those and working with people in terms of not replacing certain individuals or, hey, we have to make certain cuts. And that's why it's so important to get everybody's opinion, get everybody's ideas and thoughts so you can have the best uh, ideas for the entire district, all right, put together by everybody. And so those things, you know, I mean, I actually spent time in private business as well, 
uh, private business where I spent six years in, in average sales that I was responsible for for $12 million a month. So I've seen some numbers before. <clears throat> so thank you. Jennifer? Uh, yeah, I guess with my professional experience, I work with multi-million dollar budgets on a daily basis to support my staff, salaries, benefits, and operations of my branch and our center. And I typically balance anywhere from 40 to 50 accounting units on any given year. Um, I also regularly help my staff and our partners with developing budgets for things like proposals, uh, cooperative agreements, interagency agreements, contracts, grants, you name it. Um, I also work with funds both in and out from the state, federal, and um, other NGO sources. I also have a decent understanding of uh, public school funding from my school board experience, and I understand that the, the state is the largest funder of our schools, and those funds consist of state general aid, state categorical aid, and state per pupil aid, and that property taxes is our second largest uh, source of funds. And when you take the state general aid and combine it with the property taxes, the two largest pots of money, that makes up our revenue limit. Thanks. Thank you. Chris? I guess my experience would come from my work sitting at this table. I've been a, a board member for four years, and we've gone through budget cycles all, you know, at least four times. And then we review them quarterly with, with the administration team. We're looking at, at, at proposed expenditures on a, on a, at a meeting level every, every couple of weeks. Um, but from my personal experience, um, I've served as, as a treasurer for two organizations, um, one with a fairly large budget, one with a relatively small budget, but treasury is still the same. Um, and I think my educational background, um, having a background in public administration, has aligned me with the knowledges of, of what is out there for how public entities spend money. Uh, but I guess I would say, reiterate that it's been at this table working our budget here in the district is where I've gained my experience for that. Thank you, candidates. Jennifer, you will answer the next question first. Yep. The question is, how would, how would you handle receiving a call or email from a school parent or staff member who has had a specific complaint and who seems to be expecting an immediate response? Okay, thanks. Um, well, I would first listen and hear what the concerns are, um, keeping in mind that through our conversation, we never want to give um, the parent or the employee the impression that we're going to take board action on whatever we're talking about. Um, I would also provide them with guidance on um, how to get their concerns addressed through proper channels and refer them to the appropriate person in the school district. And if that still doesn't seem satisfactory, I would then refer them to policy 9130, which is our public request suggestions and complaints form. Um, and they can work through the tiered process um, of that and uh, possibly come uh, to a board meeting and, um, and, and speak to the entire board. So I know that most complaints that board members get are administrative in nature um, and they're not policy issues. So we need to um, make sure that these things are being addressed through our district who does the day-to-day -day operations and not by an individual board member. Um, so if a complaint arises to that level, I would inform the district administrator who can have a chance to respond. So, thanks. I, I would almost second that response. Is, is a, it's what we do. We we um, are trying to solve the the problem at the most local level. So I, if they were to come to me with a, a issue that's specific to their school, I would have them talk directly to their principal. And if that, they can't be resolved at that level, we have the administration team at the district level. There's there's a, several layers to come to before it becomes something that needs to be coming before the board. But we do have policies in place to address those issues. But I've always found that solving the problem comes best when dealing directly with the individuals that the that can solve the problem. A lot of the things that um, there's, I guess, some confusion in the district that, that a lot of these problems can come to the board to be solved, and that's it's just not the case, like Jennifer said, and like we've said before, that so much of the day-to-day -day operations is in the hands of the administrators, both in the district level and at the school school level. So uh, many of the issues that come to the board or would come to, into that kind of a, of a complaint or, or question should be ha handled someplace other than at the school board. Excellent question, and, and, and I'm going to kind of go along with this, but I'm going to just speak to how I would do this and why I think this is important. Number one, whoever is bringing that complaint forward, we need to provide unconditional positive regard for that individual. 
They are an important human being. They need to be heard. And the best way I have found from my experience, having been in that world and having done this many times, is I love, number one, I want to know their email address so that I can actually send them a follow-up and say, this is what I heard you saying. At the same time, part of that email at email to them is going to be, here is what you need to be doing next, and I'm going to copy that person on that, whether that's a district office, or a high school principal, or elementary school principal, middle school principal, does not matter. Get people knowing that they've been heard and get that issue to the right person. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. <clears throat> Chris will answer the next question first. Sorry. In the event of a crisis situation affecting our school, such as a natural disaster, an incident of school violence, or a health emergency, in what ways should school board members be directly involved in the response, and in what ways should the school board be focused on supporting the administration and staff in their efforts to implement a response and support to school families? I, I think that the school board should not be directly involved in any of the response. We have policies in place and plans in place uh, at a district level for um, how to handle such situations like that. Um, we would, of course, be supportive of everything like that is involved with g getting those resources to everybody. But um, the it, I, I don't, other than being kind of like a, a support function. Um, I don't think that the, that is the role of the school board. It's the, kind of up to the administration and the leadership team that uh, does the day-to-day -day operations again of the district. Thank you. Mike? I would concur. I think, you know, the <clears throat> district and administrators have a huge job, a huge responsibility in that role. I believe as board members, we are there for strategic planning, but we're also there for guidance and vision. So work with the strengths that might be associated with all the board members. This is a team of people, it's not one person uh, sitting up here and, and controlling or anything. So you have a lot of skills, and I, th I think the district would be, it'd be very critical for them to use district or board members who have experiences in various areas. Thankfully, I've been in those situations, so um, I would be more than willing to give guidance and, and vision, but allow the administrators to do their job. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? Uh, yeah, I guess as a school board member, uh, at, at first we ensure that the district is prepared to respond to a crisis situation by reviewing and approving our school safety plans on an annual basis. Um, but the board would not be involved in on the ground or in uh, the minute-by-minute -minute response at all. But I do think we should be available uh, to provide guidance and approve immediate next steps if necessary, and also show our support and stand with the administration on what the decisions are that they're making during this crisis situation so they feel supported. Um, the, as far as the administration goes, they would be the ones on the ground managing the day-to-day -day response or the, the immediate response, and they would um, be implementing the school safety plans that the board had approved. Uh, they would also work closely with law enforcement and emergency response personnel um, for the safety and welfare of our staff and students. And they would also be the ones that would uh, contact the families and community. Thanks. All right. Well, that was a good questionnaire. <laughs> this concludes the question and answer portion of tonight's event. With that, each candidate will now have one minute to provide their closing remarks and provide any additional response or clarification to a previous question that you guys didn't get to finish. We will begin with Chris Lau. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you to the Student Council for hosting this forum and to all who came out tonight and who will watch at later times. Um, I see serving as a board as one of the best ways to get back to the community and to advocate for public education. I really enjoy the behind the scenes work that the board does, which is essential to the success of the district. I wanna be able to share the knowledge I have gained over the past four years and apply what I've learned and experiences to help keep the district a great place for students to belong, serve, and succeed. I look forward to the opportunity to continue to serve and lead on the Holman School Board, and I would appreciate your vote on April 2nd. Thank you. Mike Dernan. I would also like to th say thank you, Crystal and Quinn and Julia and Keevan. I appreciate you 
ask, asking all these questions for everybody here in person, online, et cetera. Thank you for being important members of this Holman community. Um, I am hopeful that you learned a little bit more about Mike Dernan tonight. Some of my passions, some of the things I believe in. I would welcome anybody and everyone to continue to ask me questions as many people have already done in this community over the past couple months. Uh, I believe very strongly in giving back to the community. That is why I am here tonight. Uh, I love the aspect of giving back. I was raised that way and I will continue to be that way no matter what. And so I very much appreciate it for the opportunity to share some of my thoughts. And uh, as I said, why did I do this? It had nothing to do with anything being terribly wrong here. I just want to be able to be a part of the future, a future that includes my grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, and Jennifer. Uh, yeah, so being able to provide an exceptional education for all students in our district through high quality staff and educators is of highest importance to me. I feel that I've had exceptional growth as a board member during my first term on the board, and I can say I am wholeheartedly 100% dedicated to working towards achieving continued success in the school district of Holman. I'm a visionary thinker, a strong leader. I have great organization skills and the ability to listen and communicate with just about anyone. I'm a champion of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and I'm very proud of standing up the DEI board committee to advance our efforts in the district well into the future. Lastly, I look forward to continuing to serve on this board. I carry a genuine desire for continued growth and want to make a positive impact on our community's education system. So please get out and vote, and thank you for the opportunity to serve our school district and community. Well, this concludes our candidate forum. Thank you to the candidates once again for participating, and thank you for those attending in person or watching online. Um, now please vote on April 2nd, and thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night.